So before we begin the session, let me introduce you to our esteemed judges. You can grab a seat, sirs. Please. So uh, Mr. Dagawadi is very well renowned in his work, for his work in Telugu cinema and Bollywood. You last saw him. <laughs> I don't even need to finish my sentence. I just go like, woo. -hoo. So his last work was seen in Dam Maro Dam. And currently, I'm presuming a lot of you, a lot of people saw Baby trailer. He's there along with Mr. Akshay Kumar in that movie. And that movie is directed by Mr. Neeraj Pandey. It's soon to be released. So can we have a huge round of applause for Mr. Rana Dagupati? <laughs> Moving on, another guest, Mr. Sabu Sairal. Mr. Sabu Sairal is probably the most recognized and sought after name in our direction in Indian cinema. Now in the span of 25 years, he has received four national awards. Four national awards, people. And several industry awards. He's worked on some biggest films. I think you'll know these names. Robot. Give me, give me a shout out for each of these names, okay? Robot. Ashoka. Om Shanti Om. And Ravan. Now, he's worked with some biggies in the industry. Mani Ratnam, Farah Khan, and Priyadarshan to be like, if you name a few. Which brings me to my third and final guest of this evening, Mr. Srinivas Mohan. Now, he's a visual effects designer, popular for his works in Shankar's films. He received national awards for Robot and Shivaji. And the best thing, he has also worked on the visual effects of several movies, including, can we take a wild guess, which movie am I going to name? Hey, monkey. No, the movie is called Krish. Can we have a huge round of applause for Mr. Srinivas Mohan, people? So they're here, and now the session begins. I'm going to start off with Mr. Rana Dagupati. So, sir, you worked in both Tollywood and Bollywood industries. So it's pretty different, the work culture there and in the Bollywood scene. So how do you adapt to different work cultures? Firstly, good afternoon. Hello. Like you said, I work in a couple of languages, but uh, the madness of making a film is pretty much the same, whichever part of the world you're in. Ah, we, saw, we saw the example. There you go. So, so no, there's really no difference with the language. OK. So moving on, um, how, was the experience moving, uh, how was the experience working for this movie so far? Well, how has uh, it changed you as an actor? Well, I've been working on this film for two and a half years now, shot for over 200 days. Uh, broke two knees, injured a wrist, broke my skull. So yeah, a bunch of those things. I was in the hospital about four or five times. I, uh, the, the coolest thing about shooting for this film is, uh, is you're going and trying to recreate a period that was never there. And uh, so you start living characters that uh, you've dreamt of as a child. So it's almost a very childlike thing where you go to a film set, everything is larger than life. And um, it's, a, it's kind of an ego booster in some strange way because I'll have to tell you the, the biggest ego boost on this film, when I walked on set, I had a 140, 150 foot statue of mine built in the middle of the palace. So Can we hear it <laughs> for Mr. Ranada Gopati? And it's all built by this man here. But I'm saying it's, it's, a, it's an unbelievable thing, you know, when you walk and see a 100 foot statue of yourself and say, yeah, that is where I am. And that feels so intense. Yes. So yes, this experience has been lovely so far. Okay, lovely. So, which also brings me to my next question. You're playing the antagonist in the movie. How was the experience? Well, it's nicest to play bad because you'd love to do it in real life and here you go, you can get to do all that shit in a film. Okay, okay, okay. So, tell me one thing. Um, we saw this in the making of Bahubali. I think all of us saw the set design is very intricate and so is the entire attire and the makeup. So, how long does it usually take for you to get into character for the movie? See, first, it took me about six months to get into this film. Okay. Because uh, what you see now is a slightly smaller version of me. I was about, and this is small, trust me. I was about 25 kilos heavier. I was 120 or 130 when I was fighting, shooting for the war. So, uh, so yeah, it took me about six months to get there. That's to begin with. Six months? Yes. All the gym freaks, take yeah. note. <laughs> and, uh, this is the guy you need to approach for tips. Mass, so, mass. So, yes, obviously, it, you're playing a war film. You're part of a war yes, film, so you true. need to look the part. Yes. And uh, there's been extensive design in terms of whether it's costume or whether it's the war armors or all of those that uh, went through several iterations for months and years, and this is the final stuff. 
So, how was it working with Mr. S. S. Rajmouli? See, this is um, to me, he's probably one of the, the finest filmmakers this country has ever seen. Mm -hmm. He's uh, made big visual commercial. There you go. I don't have to say more about Rajmouli. So, see, he's made big, big commercial blockbusters. He's made a film with a fly. And yet, they're cool films. So yes, and he's a great guy to work with. He's unbelievably nice to work with. Okay, so uh, you mentioned you've been roughly working uh, on this movie for like an odd 200 days, two years, right? Yes. So I'm presuming, uh, did and you guys become like a- And that's only part one. Oh, that's part one. Yeah. People, part one, 200 days. You know, for these past few days, I've been pointing out epitomes and uh, symbols of dedication. Here, these people. So tell me, in this uh, span of two years, did you guys become like a bunch of like close-knit group? Well, we didn't have a choice. We all had to be friends. <laughs> we were together for 300 days. So waking up, going to sleep and all of that. So yes, we are. It was like a reality show behind the scenes. Huh? <laughs> Fully. <laughs> okay. So, um, like I said earlier, the set design is very intricate. It's awesomely beautiful. It also meant that you guys had to travel a lot to locations. So, where all did you guys go and how was the entire experience? Well, all the locations were built by this man here. Okay. And this man here on the computer. Okay. And we only had to, we all, the, most of the film is shot in Ramoji Film City in Hyderabad. Okay. Because that's the only land that you, is available in this country and it's, you can do comfortable to shoot, great workshops, it's, it's 3,000 acres. So, that was our film set. Can we hear it for the team of Bahawali once again? Which reminds me, when is the trailer going to come out? We're looking at some point in Jan. Okay, so some that's point of Jan. Some point in January. Mid Jan. Yes, around. that's when the first. Perfect. Part. Fantastic. So, moving ahead. Um, assuming the movie has several complicated and uh, extremely technical fight and war scenes, uh, did you have to undergo any special training for that? See, the f biggest uh, action piece in this film is the war that we shot for. Mm -hmm. We shot for about 120 days of action. So it's, you're going to a set and fighting for 120 days. Okay. Obviously, uh, Peter, Peter Hain is the, is the fight master, the fight choreographer for the film. Uh, so Prabhas and I actually had to go through about five, six months of training with a bunch of fighters from Vietnam. Uh, mixed martial arts, weaponry and all of that. And obviously riding horses and chariots and all those other crazy things. It doesn't feel awesome to ride on a chariot. Yeah. Fully, like, fully awesome. Chalo, Sarthi, chalo, aage badho. <laughs> fully does. But when you fall off, it's not such a great feeling. <laughs> Trust me on that one thing. Okay, so also, was there any particular stunt in this movie? Like you just said, there are a lot of war scenes. For 120 days, you were just shooting fight scenes. So was there any particular stunt you were like finding very difficult to perform? Well, there was once I flew off a horse. Not for the shot, but by mistake. How do you so fly I, off a horse? I just flew off, that's all. <laughs> I almost felt Superman-esque for a few seconds because there was a travel time in the air before my head hit the ground. <laughs> and uh, so they rushed me to a hospital and the first thing the doctor did was, can you hear? Can you see? I'm like, what? So he thought my brain was damaged at that point, but no. <laughs> no, <laughs> you look pretty much intact. <laughs> yeah, fully We intact. are all thankful for that. But yes, but they're, they're very, very extremely uh, complex kind of uh, shots that have been choreographed okay. for this. Okay. And you will see a lot of that in the war. It's, it's, very, it's hard for me to even to explain what went through this, this. So for the record, you still do not know how and why you managed to fly off the horse. For the record, actually I'll tell you a very funny thing that happened. Just a few weeks ago when uh, I injured my right knee, left was gone a few months ago. So I was sitting in my vanity, icing my knee after the shot. Prabhas walks in, he's icing his shoulder after the shot. And we look at each other and we laugh and uh, the first line he says to me is like, Dude, after part two, I think all this stuff can go into the fridge and we can tell people during Bahubali, these worked well. So, so yeah, so that's a... All right, so um, what was your most favorite experience while shooting this film? Dude, every day, every day on the set because it's, I mean, you like go... All 200 odd days. Yeah, completely, because you go to something that you've never seen before. I mean, every single day you're learning something new, every day you're discovering something new. I mean, it's not only us, every single one on that set, no one's made a huge war film like this before. True, 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 true. So can we once again hear it for Mr. Rana Dagupati? <laughs> Which brings me to my last question for this man here. Do you think this film, once it releases into the Indian market, is it going to change the perception of the fan base in India towards cinema? Well, one is, uh, India is, is, a, is an auditorium that likes largeness. It's an auditorium that likes big cinema. It's, uh, it's a 
very culturally driven industry because of so much culture that what we have and this is probably the best film that's portraying that on celluloid so yes so awesome once again for mr anand agarwal a huge shout out <laughs> you saw the making of that movie so now which brings me to my next scapegoat here on stage hmm, let me see mr sabu sairal so uh so you like you're a man who really needs no introduction like rana da gopi all of you are like stalwarts in your own fields yeah so tell me one thing a uh, production designer is often mistaken for art director so what is the difference between two i think our av students here who've come from media colleges would need to know that hi everyone uh, see actually uh, this is a very american term in the british school actually it is art director now the art director comes under the production designer uh -huh. the production designer designs the full look of the film from the beginning like finalizing the locations onwards the costume colors costume design uh, the research team every, everyone works under the production designer including the art director art director okay. is mostly in charge of putting up the set okay. and he'll have prop masters uh, all those people under them Like okay. we have typers, lot. It's a huge <laughs> department. So actually. the hierarchy is like huge. In fact, if I tell you, every day at least about 500 people are working for me for this film, okay. and they've been working past three years. <laughs> and Whoa. I have started my work three and a half years back, research and things like that. And uh, we've been shooting almost two and a half years now. So uh, if you ask me, production designing the whole look, whatever you see on the screen, we are responsible for it. Okay. Including the makeup, if the colors are not correct, the some in CG we are consulted. Some even when they do the 3D extensions and things like that, we have a say in the matter. We give them references or uh, we discuss. So basically, it, it falls in, under your gamut of work. Yeah. The director mainly takes care of the emotion of the film and the actors acting and things like that. Rest the backdrop completely. We are involved in that production designers and with the. Uh, the DOP. He's a director of photography. Perfect. Which brings me to my second question. Um, what kind of architectural styles did you uh, incorporate in the film? Did you like mix of make a, like a fusion of Indian and Western? No, no. See, fusion doesn't work like that actually. Because if you have to be authentic and uh, believable, uh -huh. I think I have followed post and lintel system, which okay. was very common in fifth and tenth century BC. Okay. So, which is a very Indian uh, way of building temples. Where they stack, uh, put the pillars, then they put a horizontal beam, yes. and then they keep stacking the ones which you are made. It balances the, the entire frame. Uh, so that is the system we have followed here, post and lintel system. Okay, so sir, after Asoka, you have mostly worked on sci-fi films. So how does it work? Uh, like, how does it feel to be working on a period film again? Now, actually, the first period film which I did was uh, uh, Kala Pani. That was a long time back. 20, that was a long time back. Twenty years. I remember. Back, I, I remember watching that movie. And My then, father made me really watch it. Then I worked on Hey Ram. That okay. also was a period film. But that was within like the English era, no English uh, when they were ruling us. This uh, Ashoka was actually fifth century BC. This is also almost the same period, like tenth century BC. It is actually. So um, it is interesting because we need to do a lot of research. Okay. But I, Prefer to do futuristic films like Krish and what have I have done now, the R A one and uh, Robo and things like that because it's easier for me because I'm a uh, see actually I I'm a big fan of James Bond films, so uh, those days in those before, days before uh, Spielberg's films uh, like uh, came up okay so all the old James Bond films I used to be a big fan of seeing the high tech things. The, Some antenna coming up here, and the gadgets, the flying car, and all those things. So I was an all-rounder when I was a kid. So that got interested in me. So, uh, so you worked with some really, really, really intense directors. So how was it working with Mr. S. S. Rajamouli? Each one is different. See, Mani Ratnam is a different uh, from a different school. Like I've worked with Priyadarshan, I've worked with Shankar, I've worked with now I'm working with Rajamouli. Rajamouli. For him, he, I someone asked me. Actually, uh, I can say he is possessed by cinema. Others are <laughs> only influenced, or he is. Can we have a huge round of applause for Mr. S. S. Rajamouli also? <laughs> yes, sir. Please, yes, yes, sir. No, he is really possessed because nobody can be like that because he doesn't sleep. When we come to the set, he is already there in the set at 5:30 in the morning, and we are working till almost 1:30 in the night. 
and he also works after finishing the shooting then he goes to the editing room then he goes for discussions then by, by the, i don't know at what time he sleeps or whether he's sleeping or not actually <laughs> but he's too involved in the project it's really difficult to be like him actually awesome so uh, before i move on to mr srinivas mohan i'd like to ask you one, i'd like to ask you like one last question uh, what inspired you to get into this field see i should say it was accidental because i was a graphic designer i was freelancing when i was studying in college okay i did my visual communication uh, industrial designing in uh, chennai that's a five years course and then i was working on and i was uh, i used to do exhibition designs so seeing my work and miniatures and things like the models my one of my assistant who, uh, my one of my friend who was my junior who became an art director before me he wanted some help so i started working for him and he as a i went as a, a second unit art director to complete a film because the art director became a director in a malayalam film yeah yeah so i took over that film and worked for seven months yeah i started enjoying i i, I was thinking i am in the right place now actually because whatever i learned and whatever i was interested in and whatever i wanted to know about i got a chance and opportunity to do that and the producers were spending the money to make like how we said to make a 110 feet statue or 150 statue if i want to really do a sculpture of that size i don't think i can really dream also okay. but the producers spending the money i have having a talent is one thing but to showcase the talent i you need the opportunity the right true, opportunity true, true. i feel this film industry has given me the right opportunity to try out different things like period films uh, different architectural styles i'm trying in different films i'm doing a period uh, sorry uh, futuristic films gadgets i'm making for krish i made lot of gadgets in fact so did robots, any so. particular movie inspire like any movies you saw no, 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 in your I, childhood did they inspire no, actually i told you no only james bond films which is to fascinate me at those days the uh, 10 commandments and all those things maybe the see the way it was parted now when i saw uh, exodus i could uh, remember those days uh, that impact was much uh, bigger maybe when your kids we really <laughs> fall for such things actually all right can we have a huge round of applause for mr sabu sairal please an awesome person when it comes to designing and which and like creating sets so which brings me to mr srinivas mohan sir so, so uh, what do you think is the potential of vfx in our bollywood industry considering the costs are really 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 humongous yeah uh, first of all good afternoon yeah can uh, we hear it from mr shrinivas mohan please yeah uh, and uh, nice to see uh, en energy here and uh, this is what we are looking for uh, into our industry like uh, as because a lot of artists are here and uh, we are all for we are uh, we are all waiting to bring all your talent into our uh, uh, cinema industry yeah uh, as a visual effects supervisor uh, it's my role is uh, uh, when story or director imagines like this is what i want to bring it in the film uh, it's like a lot of things it's impossible to shoot impossible to uh, uh, practically do that so those from that particular time so i involve into the like all his visions bringing into the till uh, film releases so it's like uh, beginning from the story level changes in the slight uh, script level and then after that in the shooting spot then uh, uh, final execution like a post production wise till release in the film so it's like a continuous along with the journey along with the director that's uh, main uh, visual effects role okay so so, so so sir as a vfx supervisor are you constantly needed on the set or like your work begins once and the shots have been taken no it's uh, that's what its journey starts from the uh, along with the director it's there uh, from the beginning okay uh, when story discussion is happening then after that uh, pre production stage like while doing the storyboard and uh, uh, pre visualization then after that on location yes definitely on shooting spot we have to be there and taking care like uh, Uh, what kind of uh, uh, angles there is it really fitting for my vision what we are going to bring so it's like on location is a must so that is a one of the 50% of the crucial part uh, in the my role be on location and say certain things no i need like this i need like this so and working together as a team okay and that that is one of the main uh, so you basically there from the pre to production to post yeah it's almost Very like nice. 3 years for me 
in this project. Can we hear it from Mr. Srinivas Mohan once again? Thank you. Awesome work these guys do, which brings me to an important question. Did you create any innovation or any innovative thing for Bahubali? Because usually we see that, you know, when, when movies yeah. incorporate a lot of VFX, there's something which the director wants and then, you know, the art designer comes by and says, I want this. And the VFX guy also adds on his element and there, voila, you have it. Anything yeah, I, which you made for Bahubali? Yeah, exactly. Uh, this, what I can say is innovation is like everyday challenge. Okay. So how to solve that challenge? That is what the most uh, uh, innovative thing. Okay. Because the, in this f film, the director's vision is like so huge. It's, okay. uh, uh, it's like uh, really big where uh, what I feel is like in this about the film, uh, after seeing the film, like uh, abroad a lot of people, when they show India, it's more like a, they always show as a dirty place and uh, that, that kind of attitude is there. But after this film, I know, I'm sure that people will, they realize like we are also living like this. We are so rich. We, we have this kind of culture. So we are so lavishly, we were there. That kind of attitude, I think they will be able to get through this film. That is what we are all working for and I think that's what uh, all the director's vision and we are all, uh, it's coming out well in that path. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. That's a so great innovation wise, like in this film, if you see that uh, we have a lot of uh, war sequences as emotionally and uh, as a sets wise, it's entire thing, uh, uh, like it's not the existing ones, it's like a period film. So we have to create digital. So a lot of digital sets uh, are there and uh, uh, Sabu Sirili has designed a lot of things and uh, so that part of the things we build in the on location. So you have seen that yeah, even yeah. the statue that yes, what the he huge has statue, the huge so, statues. Yeah, we have created only the legs on the practical set and okay. digitally we are extension uh, the entire uh, uh, part so of the... So the entire statue actually got completed in the post. So yeah, you just post. Get, get got yeah. like the pedestal and this... Oh, yeah. wow. It's like a combination of digital a and... A huge round of applause for this awesome VFX work, people. You don't... You know, this kind of VFX work makes you believe the fact that, you know what, we've finally transcended into an age where we can actually be compared to Hollywood. So can we hear it for Bahubali once again? No, we should definitely... People should look at this film as abroad more than a uh, FX wise. It's like at the grandeur which the people are working here. I think they always likes the. They should think that this is like our India has that kind of potential and the a lot of artists. Yeah, that uh, one more thing I like to mention that for this film we have used almost uh, one of the f greatest artists and uh, I think I'm, I don't know some people they might be here and uh, mm -hmm. uh, they have created. I think you guys seen that the creation from the uh, sketch level till the uh, uh, final output and that is what really amazed us because we have India has a lot of talent in it. Okay. So the thing is like what I missed in this small thing especially the artists when we are working with uh, 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 they are more into like creating uh, uh, in different uh, what is it uh, whatever they have their own uh, content but when you come to the film visual uh, like visual media, especially this, we have, they have to work with a lot of uh, combination with what the director wants and more realistic. Yeah, when you're doing animation film, that is different. We have a lot of freedom to uh, uh, work with it, but when you're coming into visual effects, especially live film, so that they need to bring that their talent into matching with the realistic uh, 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 feel. That is what I think people has to more uh, 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 convert into that level because we have okay, a lot of okay. talent in the different way. I think you can see in the Comic Con. Yeah, obviously, like, yeah, obviously. That, we that's, all can uh, see that. So we are all expecting and waiting these people to uh, come into the visual effects, in the, like especially film industry and uh, uh, boost our uh, industry so much into further, the, further especially ahead. in the creative part. Yes, yeah. true. So uh, before I let you all go, I need to ask you one last question. You know, Mr. Uh, Shankar and Mr. Rajamoli are two such esteemed directors who are pursuing VFX aggressively in our Bollywood circuit. Yeah. So how was the experience working with them? And what do you think, like, what do you expect the fans are going to, like, take back home once when they watch Bahubali? Yeah, uh, one thing, uh, uh, yeah, working with uh, uh, big directors like Sankasar and uh, uh, Rajamoli sir is like, I can say I'm in right era to work with them and I'm so lucky to be there in this era. Uh, 
thing is like they are both are very big visionary they have a lot of visions they need lot of team like big uh, uh, creative people and the artist so because lot of times what we have a uh, main issue is like uh, the visions it's not able to convert because of the lot of artists are not there as a first communication level so in this film we are able to got lot of talent and uh, uh, converting them into the uh, first storyboard level and uh, then after that uh, 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 bringing into the physical part as a officer what he has converted and that way they both has a very good visionary uh, uh, visions wise and we are all working helping them to get that vision into that and about the bahubali wise what i can say one word is like it's not a film i think it's experience so when you see in the film after come out of the film it's you feel uh, you are in that era that is what i think audience will mem- keep that memory in there so can we hear once again for the team of bahubali so guys guys thank you very much i'm to so well this is bahubali this has been 3 years of not mine but uh, it's not man hours it's man years of thousands of us and the film will be out the summer of 2015 I'm hoping all of you like it and enjoy it and thank you very much and have a great evening at Comic Con thank you